Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Life Live. We've got Dr. Sherry Keffer and Chris Williams here. And guys, welcome. Good to talk with you. So glad you're with all of us here today. Good Doing to be right? here with you, too. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> We've got like 20 inches from each other Yeah, here, this Chris. isn't exactly the six feet. I know. We need to for <laughs> shuffle to the left or to the right, I think. <laughs> you know, uh, September is National Recovery Month. It's also probably national tree bark month and national uh, groundhog month but anyway it is national recovery month and i'll tell you it's a great time uh, to get involved with what we're doing 12 steps to happier that's our life recovery um our, our workshop our seminar that we're going to be doing here chris and i are part of the cast of characters focusing on the 12 steps to happier and that's online october the third and you could be part of it we're really really looking forward to that chris when you think of 12 steps mm -hmm. what do you think of i think of taking a light shining it in the dark places and doing some cleaning so you live in a better space yeah i totally totally agree and you know um i, I if people have doubts about the 12 steps we always talk about you need to work all 12 steps and everything. But let me just tell you about one step that if you just did this one step, you'd have a totally different life. And that's the 10th step where we every day we we sit back and we kind of go, hmm, did I hurt anybody? Did I treat anybody wrong? And and then you immediately admit it to that person. Oh, wow, I didn't handle that well. So you're staying current in relationship. I mean, just that one out of 12, and they're yeah. all valuable. But that is an amazing uh, principle. Dave Stoop and I say that, you know, we practice these principles in all of our affairs together. And that's why we're still riding together, partnering together after all these years and if you need some more insight into recovery come join us for that I, I just want to make one comment you know just in talking with those of us that struggle with some type of addiction you know it's those resentments that mm -hmm. anger that ends up being i mean inside of us it's like a cesspool yeah and and we instead of getting the resentments out or letting things go we numb out through whatever it is so this yeah. your event really is about how to get to the heart of letting those resentments go so they don't continue to take you down with acting out mm. and, and, I, and people mistake oftentimes that's just about the behavior yeah but really we're going to be talking about emotional sobriety what, what does it mean to be able to handle our emotions well as we as, as these 12 steps lead us into greater feelings uh, and feelings as we say feel and deal with them yeah and so that's what opens up the happiness part of us yeah i love one of the recovery uh, slogans when we they talk about not having the luxury to have a resentment mm. because you know it it isn't about the other person it's about your own heart being eaten away by bitterness resentment and the bible's so clear to get rid of all of it and it doesn't say get rid of all of it well except you know in the case like you where this happened to it. no all of it. it it's just a gift to yourself i think probably the most powerful health food out there is forgiveness mm -hmm. and uh, just letting things go well we're going to go to a break when we come back we're going to talk with you really glad you've joined us today we love getting to be here if you need some help, it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You can find out about brains, boundaries, battles, and the Bible. John Townsend, Henry Cloud, Dr. Amon, Sheila Walsh, and myself, December 5th. You, you can find out about that at newlife.com and 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll be back right after this. I came into this thinking 
that my husband was the cause of many of our issues. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop will be held online Saturday, October 24th. But after learning about our attachment styles, I understood how our past hurts were playing into our present problems. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Here at this workshop, we had our first First ever conversation without yelling, blaming, and accusing. 1 800 NEW LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1 800 New Life. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arderman here, Dr. Sherry Keffer. Intimate Deception is a great book. If you haven't read that and you have been betrayed, deceived uh, by somebody that you just happen to be married to, it would really be a great healing book for you. A Gift of Any Amount will send you the 12 Gifts of Life Recovery. But right now, we're going to go over here and we're going to uh, talk to Michelle Calspell, Montana, I believe it is, and uh, listens on the internet. How are you? I'm just fine. Thank you. How are you? Doing all right. How could we help you today? What What's going on? Well, um, we have an adult son. He's in his 30s. And he, um, in, as an adult, was diagnosed with bipolar 1. And uh, we have a relationship with him. It's a little strange because he clearly holds some resentments towards us for different things that he perceives happened in his childhood and we've tried to talk to him about it uh we're told by his wife um that he still holds resentments she's hoping to that he would talk to us about it when we do talk which is frequently uh several times a week he acts like everything's fine um but he just won't talk about these deep resentments he's holding um i might mention that he has a bit of a distorted view about some of the things that did happen. Um, his memories of things um, are distorted, not just about us, but about other things too. So but, what's the question for us? Um, how, how could we help you with this? Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening to history. Um, so we, I really, we want to know how much do we press to resolve this, to ha give him opportunities, how, how do you go about getting a, getting, giving a person an opportunity to share with you um, what they're holding on to? Okay. And with the bipolar one, how much do you press? He, okay. He's doing pretty well, I have to say. He manages Michelle, it well. So I'm, uh -huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I think would be a way to make it better. Then Chris and Sherry are going to tell you how to make it go away. But no, they'll, they'll, they'll go deeper. <laughs> but, but here's what I would do. His wife, your daughter-in-law, came to you and said he has these resentments toward you, right? Yes. That's how you know. So here's what I would be well, doing. Well, we could feel it. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. here's what I'd be doing. I would, be, I would go back to her and say, you know, I talked to a professional about this. And here's what this professional said. It is every son's job to get over his mother. If his mother was great, he has to get over that because he's, his wife is not going to be that great. If he didn't like his mother, he has to get over that or he's going to take it out on his wife. He has to get over his wife, I mean his mother. Now, the second thing is, I would say to her, help him to get over whatever it was because guess what it isn't helping him it isn't resolving anything and he's making his life and your life miserable the more you encourage him to get over me the more you're going to experience the guy you married and have the kind of relationship 
that you want and need. That's just my take on this is how I would handle it since she came to you. But uh, Chris, Sherry, what are you guys thinking would be a good way for uh, her to go at this point? Hey, Michelle, have you ever been angry at somebody and um, tried to talk with them through that and they told you where you were off or wrong about your anger or your experience? Um, yes. What was that like for you? Um, it was, it, I, I have to accept that their the version is different than mine. Um, but I've, and I try to work through it with them, but good, good. it's never, never great. Yeah. Yeah. So when you say your son has a distorted memory and I actually believe you, I think he, he probably has some, maybe the facts and some of the perceptions are off. However, you said something in what you're saying is like, man, his, he has this distortion and kind of getting hijacked also into his bipolar one condition. And again, I'm not saying that that's not all true, but the starting place of being a safe person for your son to open up to you is to really, instead of him getting it right, he just simply needs to be heard and he needs to know that. Oh, he, I agree. Yeah. And so, and in that, just talking through that, the differences aren't one's right and one's wrong. They're just different. But most importantly, you want to move into what he, you know, what his resentment or anger is towards you, how to heal that out, and then how to move forward. I think one of the greatest gifts, Michelle, a parent can give a child is empathy. Because empathy is actually suspending judgment. In order to have some empathy for somebody else, you have to completely suspend judgment. So the idea of distortions, I'm hearing you, and yet it, you've, you've not had to live on the other side of him. Like he's, he's had to live on the other side of you. And I know this, it's so tough to work with kids and young adults that have bipolar disorder, the, the bipolarity, they, they come into the world with bipolarity. Mm -hmm. They are harder kids to soothe. Mm -hmm. They are, um, I don't know if he was like that when he was little, but the families that I work with, with bipolar, you know, young adults, when I go back in history and I talk about what it was like to hold them, were you able to soothe them? Were they, you know, did they kind of have these places of going up and down when they were um, young. Um, did you feel like you could ever do it right? Um, did they have challenges in school? These things are a part of their history. And so on the other side of them, it's easy to kind of look at them and go, gosh, they were tough and they're still tough. But imagine something taking you over. And it's taken over your brain. You get up in the morning and some days you're good and some days you're not. And you cannot plan on that. And so they feel un, in some ways they feel not, they, they feel unheld well. They don't feel like they've been held well. Not that it's your fault. I could have put your son in any family. I could have picked 20 families. And you know what? The mom would be going, it was tough, man. Yeah. And so he needs to have you own what it was like um, for him not to be held well, even though you did your absolute best. You just have to peel back the guilt because you did the best you could do. But they are, that brain is a hard brain to settle into. So you've been on kind of a wild ride with him. But hearing that yeah. can help him heal. So what do you think? And I would, I would, I would love to have that opportunity to mm. tell him that. Um, interestingly enough, um, he he wasn't a difficult child, and t he had a social difficulty and a lot of illnesses um, growing up. It was as an adult that it really went and got into college um, that it began to manifest itself mm -hmm. and and show itself. And um, I have no problem with with being an empathetic listener and i have actually apologized my husband and i both have apologized for him for the pain that he experienced um it is it is a a challenge when they're telling you but you did this 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 and this and none of that is is true but mm -hmm. i can tell i always tell him i'm i'm so sorry for 
how that came off to you. That was never our intention. We tried to come. But you're defending. You're, with empathy. I know, but you're already defending. So this is what you say. Let me help you just a little bit. Okay. You say, you. yeah. So instead of defending that, that didn't happen because then he's not going to be heard. You just cut off comfort. You say this. Oh, wow. Can you, can you tell me where we were at when that happened? I really want to hear you. Can you take me back to that point and then listen? It doesn't indict you. You can still completely hold a different opinion, but at least let him take you back to the story. Mm -hmm. You're not yeah, guilty. I think that's, okay. I think yeah. that's, that's fantastic. Good. I like advice. that. All right. Yeah, so I, I hope and pray something we've said here has been uh, really good. And we've got a, a book called Understanding and Loving Your uh, someone who has bipolar disorder. And I'm going to send that to you. I think it's going to be so helpful. Anybody else living with someone with bipolar disorder, that's one of the book in the, in the Understanding and Loving series, really powerful series. And, you know, there's uh, borderline personality disorder, chemical dependency, sexual addiction, all of those are included in that series. So would hope and pray that you could access that. Now, let's go and talk with, how about we talk with Ben, Madison, Wisconsin. Hey, Ben, Sirius XM is where he listens to us. How are you today? I'm do doing well. Okay. You cut out there, so I'm going to um, hope that that self-corrects. How could we help today? Oh, I'm sorry about that. No problem. Sure. Um, so uh, for several years, I had gotten into a lot of uh, horrible sexual sin, a lot of addiction. Um, and out of that, I ended up having an affair. Um, my first marriage ended in divorce. Hmm. Um, I remarried um, with, with the person I actually had had the affair with. Um, and God has been doing a lot of work in my life, uh, getting rid of a lot of the other sin and overcoming those addictions, but um, lately I have just been uh, feeling crushed about my new marriage and whether or not it's biblical. And I know there's a lot of uh, great um, authors out there and preachers and pastors who, you know, seem to affirm that I'm not living in adultery in my new marriage, but then I read other things that seem to have biblical support that I may be in. It's just kind of soul crushing at this point. And uh, so what what is the kind of, question for us? To, what, what's the question you're asking us then? Sure. I, I guess essentially is is my new my new marriage uh, is it an adulterous um, in adultery. Yeah. OK, well, there are, as you say, two schools of thought. One is that as long as you're in that marriage because of the way it started that you're living in adultery um, another thought is that christ wanted us to realize that wanted us to realize if you married somebody that wasn't qualified uh, or free to remarry he wanted you to realize that 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 union uh, was unholy or it wasn't acceptable then once you see it now, what do we do? Is that the unpardonable sin? Can I not be forgiven? Then you need to uh, repent. You, you need to confess it. You need to own it. And then you pick up your life. You accept Christ's forgiveness for your sin. And then you love this other person the way Christ has loved you. You give mercy to this person and grace the way Christ has given it to you. Those are the the two different ways to look at it. Let's hear what uh, Chris has to say and then you, Sherry. Yeah, well, Ben, I, I don't know if I can speak too deeply into are you currently living in sin and what do you do about that? Because I don't think that, for instance, divorcing the wife that you're with is the answer, obviously. Right. Um, but I will say this. Mm -hmm. What Steve is referring to is that you're waking up to how this thing inside of you, the sexual brokenness inside of you has acted itself out and caused a lot of harm first for you and everyone around you. And so there's no substitute for doing the work to looking at those places, looking at the behavior and the relational patterns and the way that it acts out 
um, sexually and go into work on healing and leaving behind those and working on your current relationship as well as making amends for those you have hurt in the past. And I have a thought, Ben, and I don't know how close this hits the mark, but it's interesting to me that you're asking the question because I'm wondering if this sexual acting out that has been a part of your life, and thank you for being so vulnerable for us, but that sexual acting out and the brain that wags that, you know, it, it's, it's slippery. It's a tricky brain and it wants to make whatever relationship you're with not okay. Mm. So whatever happened with your wife, you made those, you know, self deceptions, you had an affair and now you're with her, the one you're with, but now all of a sudden she has a problem because she's the affair partner and it's going to keep you out of intimacy. We'll be back after this. After I found the pornography on the internet, I said you either get help or I have to leave this household. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter in place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. I believe that I could do it on my own. I just believed if I tried hard enough and pulled myself up hard enough by my own bootstraps, I could do it. It was a battle that I'd had all my life. I had to get help. The Every Man's Battle Workshop can be a trip to the sexual addiction emergency room. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, September 12th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. The single most helpful thing was to realize that I wasn't the weirdest guy on the planet. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New life. That's 1 800 639 5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll free 1 800 229 3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back talking with uh, Ben here. Anything else we want to share with Ben? Uh, I, I, I'll say this, Ben, are you, have you done anything about recovering from that problem that led you into this relationship? I, yeah, I, you know, all I can say, it, it was uh, a lot of anguish, a lot of prayer, a lot of heartbreak, I, and just finally getting over all the excuses um, that I kept giving myself for making my behavior okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what I would do... Ooh, yeah. So, so I would get into a recovery program because a lot of times the only thing a person does to help their addiction to all these things you're involved with is they marry the person they had an affair with. And that's not a very good treatment program for it. All these other guys, they, they've stepped up and they said, I need some help here. It's not just me being spiritual now. I've got to build some character. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you. To do that, I'm going to send you a Life Recovery Bible and a copy of the Sexual uh, Addiction Workbook or Sexual Integrity Workbook, and I think that's going to help you. Chris, you have a comment. Well, I, I was going to encourage Ben to really, really pay attention to what Sherry was saying there. It's that there is an established pattern, yeah, and that it's really important to understand that the, the sexual addiction or that brokenness that shows up is really about, at the end of the day, intimacy or how we connect or don't connect. And so the more we act out, the more that real people become a problem. 
And so we're, we have, they're just in the way. And so right now his current wife feels like she's just in the way. She also probably shows up and reminds him of his shame over and over. Mm -hmm. We need to go back. He needs to do the work to go back historically to see how that pattern showed up early and often. And Ben, there's just one more thing. You've done a lot of good work on ownership, but she, but I want you to continue to get into good therapy. Um, and good help that specializes in this area to show you where you're missing out relationally. You, you just, Ben, I, I want to encourage your heart. I love your vulnerability with us. Um, I, I was married to a gentleman like yourself that had an affair and struggled with sexual acting out. And he ended up marrying his affair partner. Um, and after he'd been married for a bit, he had called me, he reached out to me and said, hey, uh, how are you doing? And I asked, I said, does your wife, I'll use the name Janelle, does Janelle know that you're calling me? And he said, no. And I said, well, you're doing the same to Janelle that you did to me. But at that point, he had not gone through deeper recovery for the sexual acting out. He was still acting out. And, and so it didn't matter who he married, the problem was inside of him. And I just... We care about you here. We'd love to get you to every man's battle. We'd love to help you um, get to a deeper place of healing mm -hmm. so this doesn't have to follow you um, or you don't have to lose another relationship through it. It really is important. And I'm, I just, the, the humble spirit that you have and wanting to do the right thing, I think without recovery, you're just not aware of certain things, but your, your heart, you're wanting the right thing. And so, uh, I'll send you this uh, workbook. I'm going to encourage you to go to Every Man's Battle and encourage you to get involved in an ongoing uh, group. All right. Okay. Let's, um, how about we go to Kelly? She's calling from Dallas, Texas. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Uh, and how's that Lone Star State down there? It's doing well. We're getting rain right now, what we needed. Good. All right. Well, how can we help today? Well, first, I want to thank you for taking my call, and this is just going to be right out there. Uh, does a wife have to give her husband oral sex if she doesn't feel comfortable with it? Well, that, that is just right right out there. It certainly is. Um, and has this been a request? Has this been forced upon you? What, what What's the situation there? Is there more requests? Yeah. Well, and, you know, it's just... The, uncomfortable and you know all that yeah okay so here's um what we teach and we teach this uh, at our intimacy and in marriage uh we teach this uh, the book every man's battle but there are a certain amount of sexual behaviors that a woman finds accept uh, acceptable and you let's say let's put those in a box and then there are a certain amount of sexual behaviors that a man finds acceptable. Let's put those in a really big box. And the only thing that's acceptable are where those boxes overlap. We have a subset now, both mutually acceptable. Does that mean it has to stay that way forever? No. If there is uh, understanding, gentleness, love, then that might expand. But to, to force or ask somebody to do something they're not comfortable with, it, it's, then that makes that sexual situation all about me and what I want, not about us and what we can do for each other. Sherry, you have a PhD. Now, this is a PhD level mm -hmm. question here. What do you think? Uh, I love handling these sessions in my office when we're talking about healthy sexuality. What does that look like? And I, I think a lot of times, and I, I feel really bad for guys in the porn industry and the way that they talk about sex when they're growing up as young boys in locker rooms. They've got this idealized fantasy about what they think the ultimate sex act is, and they they hold that up to a very high standard. And so when their wives don't feel comfortable in this case, you know, you having oral sex, it's like they have a hard time laying it down because that feels like the Super Bowl thing. And, and it's really not. There's so many different things you can do to explore healthy sexuality that you both love doing together. 
Yeah. You can reduce it to an act. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. All right, Sherry, what else do you want to say? Chris, what else do we want to say about a very difficult, difficult thing for so many folks there? What do you think? Well, I think like a lot of what we do is we dig behind the scenes and behind, there's a lot going on behind the request and there's a yeah. lot going on behind this. But one of the things I think is really important is that when we become objectified, we become less sexual. And, and this sounds really strange, but what I mean by that is sex is to engage the whole person, including their values, their dignity, their sanctity. And so to violate those values and to violate that sanctity, it dehumanizes the experience. And I think also, as Sherry was saying, that, that, that men tend to have these fantasies. I think women, some women struggle with that too, obviously. But we, we mistake intensity for intimacy. And so what, what, when we get hardwired towards, you know, a sexual experience and get ramped up around that, what we typically are pursuing again is the intensity of the experience, not the intimacy of the connection. And a lot of times what I've seen with women is in the porn industry, there's there's all these things they watch, right? And so they want their wife to reenact that. They want her to walk around in high heel shoes or do things. Um, and I won't give you all the details, but it's, it's really about a reenactment, which makes her an object instead of a person mm -hmm. that she feels fully engaged in. I mean, if that's something she would love to do, then great. But if she feels forced or coerced or uh, you know, pressured, you know, kind of bullied into that um, because of what's been seen on porn videos, it's, it's hurtful to the marriage. Well, well, not only that, but if a wife is not comfortable with that and you're demanding that, then you're causing her or wanting her to do something that's demeaning to mm -hmm. her. And that is a sick view of sexual pleasure and what sexual intimacy is. So uh, I would encourage both of you to get in that intimacy in marriage mm -hmm. intensive. Yeah. I think it could really, really help you a lot there. And uh, I'm going to just, I'll send you how we love. I think that'll be a great help to you also. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need some help, we want to help you. We've got a lot of things that can help you. 
and uh, we we need your help and uh, we'll have larry talk to us about how somebody with a heart of gold could help this ministry larry what do you have for us well you know steve i've been thinking uh, too often i come in here and I've, um it's testimony and a sales job i feel like and i i find myself in a selling mode and i want to talk about club new life in that regard you know we'll we'll tell people this is what you get you get a great thank you gift you get a video library you get all these other benefits and it's what we're going to get you so you'll give something to us and we find ourselves telling you what's in it for you and we leave off the most important thing i think and that is you know um what what do you think the act of giving does for you you know there's a satisfaction of giving of helping others who are struggling hurting and confused and your monthly support makes the help we offer available we can continue in this wonderful ministry that god honors and enables because of your gifts the satisfaction of being part of something bigger than yourself you're part of a giving family that keeps the ministry going offering all we offer month after month you know, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9-11, you'll be enriched in every way for your great generosity. And that enrichment doesn't mean financial gain, but emotionally and spiritually, you'll be enriched. And sometimes you have to give to understand what that means. So it's a little bit of a challenge to you if you don't believe that you'll be enriched by giving. Try it and see what happens. Well, and, and I, I want to add one more thing to that. It's really about what the giving does for somebody else. Absolutely. We, we recently had a woman who actually was going to take her life. She had called in the call center and was suicidal. And through the conversations, she had several conversations with our staff, got into good care, and she actually wrote you a little letter saying, hey, I didn't, I'm here because mm -hmm. of new life. So... It's really about what you're going to do for that person that really needs the help by us staying on the air and being a resource every day. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. When you, know, when, when you give money to New Life, we're meeting on the common ground. That common ground is God's love and his ability to change lives. And so we just seek your support. And I want you to think about that as you consider joining Club New Life. Amen. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you can help us, we're going to use it to help others. Same number if you need some help. There's nothing more wonderful for me to see these folks that they go to a workshop and they're so grateful and then they turn out, they want to help other people. They turn right around and become part of the giving family. I just hope that you'll do that. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let's go back to the phones. Beth from Omaha, Nebraska listens on the internet. Hi, Beth. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. Thank you. Love your guys' show through the years. Thank you. How could we help you today? Yeah, I'm just calling about just some advice for a family um, situation. I'll try to condense this here. Um, basically, I have a brother who is 39, and he's still living at home. So he dropped out of college, like 21 um, parents. How long, how long has he been living at home? Since he was 21. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And now he's 39. Okay. So parents obviously didn't set boundaries, um, didn't get any counseling or help. My dad recently passed this past December, so now it's just my mom. And so he, my brother, has not worked for the last five years. Dad was going through cancer, that sort of thing. Um, has increased verbal aggression, social anxiety, OCD, doesn't listen to my mom. So we're just trying to, she's grieving. We're trying to, as uh, I have three sisters and one lives at home. She's late 40s, moved back maybe three years ago from out of state for a hip surgery, still there. But I, I just have concerns. We're trying to figure out how can we support my mom and care about my brother. Um, I don't trust him and I'm concerned about her safety. Okay. All right. So, yeah, let's start with you, Chris. What are you thinking uh, when you hear of a, a really sad situation like this? It, it really is a sad situation. And um, I, I think, you know, the, 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 your brother's getting all the attention as far as the problem goes. Um, and, and I think that he does need to get into help. And I think that that should be a condition of him continuing to stay in our home. But the real person that needs help is your mom right now. 
um, yeah. one to grieve and then to really start addressing her fears and her concerns and, and maybe even there might be some mom guilt there around her son that keeps him hooked into her and her hooked into him. And so he has this failure to launch or definitely what we call learned helplessness. And if you're in that place of learned helplessness, you, you get into a hopeless place frustrated. You see 39-year-old men around you that are advancing in their life and families and careers, and you're stuck. And then you then that resentment and anger builds and builds and builds and builds, and it will act out on the people nearest him, the people that, who happen to be in the way. And so there does need, he needs help, but your mom needs a, a, a much stronger support internally and externally to set boundaries with him and to create a plan um, for her safety and health moving forward, as well as your brother's, uh, to put it quite honestly, help to grow up. Sherry, what are your thoughts here? Do you live near her? I live in the same city, yeah. Okay, you know what? How, how old is she? She is 73. You know what I would do? I would make an appointment with my mom at yeah. one of the new life counselors near you. Mm -hmm. And I would begin a dialogue with her, with a counselor in the room that can actually um, help to have this conversation, um, calling her into looking at her enabling. And it's, mm -hmm. and so you won't feel alone. Right, you're going to have an ally, right. an advocate, because you're going into kind of like couples counseling. Husbands and wife go. This is like sure. mom daughter couple counseling, right? Um, sure. Because sure. she's got some issues and she probably won't address them. She won't go by herself, mm -hmm. but you can go week to week right. to week with her. Don't feel like you're the bad one in the family. Feel like you're the truth teller. You're the one that's mm -hmm. going to help her change. In my office, I have a baby mobile. It's a, you know, one that uh -huh. hangs over the crib. I don't have a crib in my office, but I do have a baby mobile. It's got four monkeys that hang down. And when uh -huh. I'm having conversations like this with someone like you, Beth, I hold up the baby mobile and I said, all it takes is one monkey to start jumping on the bed. And I basically pull that monkey down and everybody else on the mobile starts moving. But you're that one monkey that's going to begin to make a change in your home. Yeah. And so yeah. you can do it, girl. Just get in to see somebody. You with sure her. can. Yeah. All right. You uh, hold I'm on. Sure I'm, I'm going to send you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to send you this book. Take your life back. I think it'll help you, and help your mom. Uh, you can give it to her. We'll we'll take a break. We'll come right back. One eight hundred New Life. If you need some help, we want to help. You. We knew our marriage was broken, but we didn't know how to fix it. The New Life Intimacy and Marriage Workshop will be held online Saturday, October 24th. It has transformed our lives, our marriage. You have reached our home. You have helped transform our lives. Join Steve Arterburn. It's been a dream of mine for a long time to help people to grow more intimately together. And we believe that everybody has room to grow in the intimacy level of their life. And Mylan and Kay Yurkovich. We help couples understand how their attachment style is sabotaging their current relationship. And then we teach them how to create comfort in a relationship. To register to find out more, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. Thank you for giving us a pathway where we can humble ourselves and say, Lord, we need help. Help us fix it. And we thank you for that. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE for more information. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of seven books, including Growth Has No Boundaries by Drs. John Townsend and Henry Cloud, Take Your Life Back by Steve Arterburn and Dr. Dave Stoop, and the Emotional Freedom Workbook. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. 
Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. I just want to say this about uh, when kids move back home and it's at age 22 and it's not getting better at age 24. You have to change psychiatrists. You have to change therapists. You have to change medical doctors. You have to change so that we get better. We move toward better. Now, are there cases where better is not possible? Absolutely. But you want to explore everything possible at age 23 and 24, or you end up at age 32 in, as Chris was saying, this learned helplessness state. And it's really sad and we hate to see it. So don't enable someone to kind of fall back into this learned helplessness at a time where maybe there's something that working with the right professional mm -hmm. and you, you can get to better. Yes. That's what we want. Steve, to I want to give away a hack here. here here's a free bit of, of uh, information. When you see a person in their 20s, it doesn't have to be their 20s, but we'll go with this, especially you see a young male in his 20s avoiding putting himself out there and seeking comfort, always what kind of the road of least resistance, always comfort. On the back side of that is fear. Yes. You yes. have to go after the fear. And he will not move on the other side of life and start taking control of his life and making progress until that fear is addressed because that's, that's the thing that's keeping him frozen and seeking comfort over and over again. Mm. And you just don't want to be the enabler of the child being stuck yes. in that uh, fear there. Yeah, you very, just keep the fear good. going. Right. All right, I want to go to Lynn from Baltimore, Maryland, W-A-V-A. -A. Hello, Lynn, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing all I, right. Um, yeah, how can we help? My husband has CTE. He has uh, dementia for the last 12 years, and I've been married 34 years, and it's the relationship is abusive, not physical, but uh, verbally. And I don't know if I can stay in it. And I'm okay. in counseling, but I'm, I'm afraid it could turn physical. Okay. So what's the question for us? I, I, my question is, do you think I should leave if I, if I, because I'm not happy and I, I cannot take the abuse anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot take uh, the name calling and yeah. the degrading. And his personality has changed mm -hmm. because of the head trauma. Um, so, well, Nick you know, was so tragic about. Well, leaving, you, you want to be safe, of course. That, that's the first priority is, is we want you to take care of yourself and be safe. Leaving is an option, but I would sure, for his sake and yours, want to pursue every other option possible before I picked that one. Now, who, um, who is working with him on his CTE but brain trauma? Who, who's working with him? Well, he has seen three neurologists. And what happens is now he's, he's pretty much got, I, he's either got the second or third stage. There's four stages, the CTE. Mm -hmm. Now he's at the point of the dementia where he cannot remember a conversation now. So okay. therapy, I don't know if it would work. Okay, so... I just think that, you know, like Dr. Amen is on here. He's a, a brain specialist. He has a, a clinic near you. I would want him to go there. But it doesn't, I mean, if you leave him, it sounds like he's not going to be able to even take care of himself. And so I just wonder if, if it's that bad, the option would be 
trying to find uh, a place for him to get the care he needs. Um, Chris, Sherry, what are you guys thinking about this? Pretty sad situation. I think it's, yeah, it's so sad. I'm so sorry, Lynn. I think yeah. you have done an amazing job of caring for him. And it's really hard to have our spouses disintegrate, right? Their um, brain go away and then for them to be more aggressive. That's the place I went, Steve. A lot of times spouses have guilt about transitioning their loved one into a care facility yeah, right? because we feel like somehow we're, I don't know, breaking code with God or we're giving up on them or we need to just hang in there. But there are places that are really suited for his, for dementia. And they've got caretakers. They've got people come in that do exercises and support groups and i don't know that yeah. i would be exploring that with you and, mm -hmm. and sometimes you need the um a psychiatrist to declare okay this person uh is no longer able to function without hurting themselves or hurting someone else they they need this different level of care and maybe it's the psychiatrist okay. that can do that for you there are people that have their full-time job is helping people just like yourself make choices about how to transition their loved one and so if you go online and look around for help with dementia transitioning my loved mm -hmm. one there'll be people that they have conversations come to your home do an assessment it's it's a full service thing yeah Chris, any, any thought you want to add? To I, I was going to say, Lynn, we're three for three on this one. Um, he's dealing with a very, very serious medical condition that needs help that is beyond you. And so uh, where Steve went was where I was going in my mind of like, he may need a higher level of care that's uh, not included in staying in your home 24-7. All right. I'm glad you called. And uh, I'm going to send you uh, a copy of Dr. Amon's book, uh, The uh, End of Mental Illness, and I think it's going to give you some great insight into what is going on with your husband, and maybe that will lead you uh, to getting some help from Dr. Amon or one of his, the psychiatrists on his team. There are four B's in the title, Brains, Boundaries, Battles in the Bible. Dr. Daniel Amon, Dr. Henry Cloud, Dr. John Townsend, Sheila Walsh, and myself are going to do this amazing intensive on December the 5th. You can sign up now. Don't miss this. I don't think we'll ever get a chance to do something like this again. I would uh, encourage you to join Chris, myself, for the 12 Steps to Happier. It's the Life Recovery Conference that's online October the 3rd. And Every Man's Battle, there's the workshop online October the 10th, Intimacy and in Marriage. Guess what? It's online October the 24th. All of that and therapists and resources and things for you when you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have not yet been able to figure out who has a problem so that we could call you. You'll have to call us until we figure that out. But look, if you need some help, don't be stuck and, and, and just say, I just can't call. It would just be such a sign of weakness or whatever. Just call and, and it's confidential and let's see if we could help you. Maybe, just maybe, you could get out of the world and the land of almost by making a phone call. Almost well. Almost living the life God called you to be. What a horrible thing to always almost be there. A phone call can change everything. Don't forget, Dr. Sherry Keffer has a book, Intimate Deception. And if you're a woman who has been deceived as she was. I mean, she's not just a PhD psychologist. She is someone who's been through this. She understands what you've been through and so much insight. So many people have been helped by this book. And Chris Williams, well, he's working on his and <laughs> we, we shame him all the time. We try to get him to finish that thing up. Anyway, if you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I'll see you Thursday. Life Recovery Today on the NRB Network, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for listening. God bless you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE is the number I hope you're going to call. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, Steve Artemir here. Thanks for watching New Life Live on our New Life YouTube channel. You know, you can see it anytime. Hope you'll subscribe. And when you do, hope you'll turn that little button thing on the bell so that whenever we post a new video, it'll ring right through. Now, if you go to newlife.com, you'll see the schedule of when we're in the studio, which is helpful to know if you have a question for the program. Or you could go to newlife.com or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could do this on the app. I mean, there's so many ways that you can stay in touch with us and know when we're there because we want to answer your questions. So thanks for watching right here on the New Life YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Click here to subscribe.